Oh, hello there. You know, the first thing I do when I come in in the morning is get the big board here ready. See, look, it has all the names of all the ships that come to visit us on these little tags here. The big board also has all the places around the harbor where the ships might go. Now, as the harbor master, it's my job to decide where the ship should go. The hardest part of getting the big board ready is deciding where to put all the ships. Because <sighs> some of the ships don't always want to go where I put them. Like, well, the ocean liners. They want to be down here close to the city so they can see the sights. And the fishing boats always want to be together so they can talk to each other. Now, if I tried to please everyone, oh, well, pretty soon, the big board would be a big mess. Now, Theodore knows you can't always please everyone. He found that out the day he was chosen for a very special job. The tugboats were gathered round the dispatcher at the Great Ocean Tug and Salvage Company dock, getting ready for their morning work meeting with the dispatcher. Theodore was waiting impatiently for the meeting to begin. For today was a very important day, Monday. Every Monday, the dispatcher gave the tugboats their special jobs for the rest of the week. First, the jobs for the week, announced the dispatcher. George will be in charge of getting new bumpers. We seem to be losing a lot of bumpers lately. Bodock, harbor safety as usual. Emily, clean up patrol. Hank, this week I would like you to be in charge of oil. Theodore looked at Hank. Oil was the job he had been hoping for. Theodore wasn't sure what jobs were left. Maybe there'd be none for him. But then the dispatcher said, Theodore, Oh, yes, Theodore. This week, you'll be in charge of welcomes. Theodore was surprised being in charge of welcomes. That meant you get to show special visiting ships around the harbor. It was a very important job. And he'd never done it before. Uh, hello, Mr. or Mrs. Special Visiting Ship, practiced Theodore. Welcome to our harbor. I hope you like it here because, because, because it's um, nice. Because it's nice. Did that sound right? Theodore wondered, what should he say? The loud blast was from George, who was on his way to work with Hank. What are you doing? asked George. I'm practicing my welcome, replied Theodore. Ah, oh, welcomes are easy, said George. You just say, hello. This is the second biggest ice-free harbor in the whole entire world. And with that, George let out a big, long blast of his horn. Big blast from my horn, thought Theodore. I wonder, is that the best way to welcome? Theodore had a job to do with Emily, so he thought he'd better ask her too, just to make sure. Emily, called Theodore, what's the right way to welcome? Visiting ships like to see interesting things, replied Emily. I always tell them about the family of whales who sometimes visit the rocky cove. That's different from what George said, Theodore thought to himself. I wonder which is really the right way to welcome. They passed Fodok, nudging Bedford Bowie back into place. Strange, Fodok was saying. This boy is spun right off his spot. Theodore knew Fodok always had a lot of useful information, so he asked. Fodok, what's the right way to welcome? You simply say, replied Fodok, that our harbor is the safest harbor in the world, and we have the most fire extinguishers. And then, he added, I do this. Fodok shot out a great spray with his firefighting hose. Another way to welcome, groaned Theodore to himself. But which welcome was the right welcome? The next foggy morning, after the dispatcher had told the tugboats their jobs for the day, he turned to Theodore and announced, We have a very special guest who has come to stay in our harbor. Please go welcome him. The other tugs were surprised. They hadn't seen or heard any special ships arrive. He came in under the water, explained the dispatcher, and now he's at the Navy Yard. His name is Northumberland. Under the water, replied Theodore. He must be a submarine, said Thorak. He's been under the water for three months, continued the dispatcher. I expect he's very tired now. He's here to rest. The tugboats floated off to work, thinking about the mysterious new visitor. Theodore set off bravely for the Navy Yard. 
When he arrived at the Navy Yard, Theodore looked around for a ship named Northumberland. The fog made it hard to see anything. How can I welcome something I can't even see? Theodore wondered. Then the fog parted a little, and he saw something that looked like a monster shark, all made of metal. Yikes! He shouted in surprise. But then he saw a name on the side of the strange thing. Sure enough, it said Northumberland. Theodore floated a little closer to the silent giant. He was so nervous his anchor was rattling. Uh, hello, Mr. Morthumson one, he began, and blew his horn as loud as he could, like George. It wasn't quite as loud as George, but it was pretty loud. And then he said, Our harbor has the second biggest ice-free whales. I, I mean, fire extinguishers. I, I mean... Theodore got jumbled up with all the things the other tugboats had told him. Their words felt funny in his mouth, like they weren't happy to be there at all. He decided he would shoot out a great spray with his fire hose, just like Fodok. But then he remembered he didn't even have a fire hose. Theodore decided he would wait for the submarine to say something. But the submarine said nothing. Not a word, not a whisper, not a wink. Theodore was sure his welcome had gone all wrong. The other tugs were waiting for Theodore when he returned to the Great Ocean Dock. They were eager to hear all about the new ship. How did the welcome go? asked Emily. What's a sunk marine like? asked Hank. Theodore hung his head. Well, a shark, I guess, but I've never really seen anything like him before. And I don't think the welcome went very well. He didn't even seem to notice me. George looked upset. Did you tell him how big the harbor is? Not really, answered Theodore. What about the whales, said Emily. Not exactly, replied Theodore. What about safety, asked Fodok. And about bigness, shouted George. The tugs all began to talk at once and toot their horns. Each one thought their welcome was the right one. The tugs turned to Theodore to see whose welcome he would choose. Theodore felt very unhappy. He had already tried to do what everyone had told him, and it had gone all wrong. Well, George said finally, you have to say something because it's getting late. Theodore set out again to try to welcome the submarine. He still wasn't sure how he would welcome or if the strange submarine would even listen to him. Theodore was surprised to see Emily and Hank floating towards him. We've come to help, said Emily. To help, echoed Hank. But, said Theodore, which welcome should I choose this time? Which welcome is the right welcome? Emily thought about it, but then she finally said, I don't know, but I do know that you have to try and do your best because, because tugboats never give up. Theodore was happy that Emily and Hank had come to help as it was getting dark and Northumberland was kind of scary. But as they approached the submarine, all shiny and silent, Hank's eyes grew wider and wider Maybe, whispered Hank, sunk marines don't like tugboats. Maybe that's why he doesn't say anything. Theodore floated a little closer to the submarine, who was just clearing his throat and making brave puffy sounds with his smokestack when Fodok appeared. The reason, announced Fodok proudly, Northumberland hasn't said anything, I believe, is because submarines only speak in secret underwater code. Then Fodok made all kinds of sounds with his special equipment. But the submarine still didn't say a word, or a whisper, or even wink. Thanks for trying anyway, said Theodore. It seemed like there was nothing to be done. When suddenly, much to Theodore's surprise, George rumbled up. Did you tell him how big things are? He demanded. No, admitted Theodore. He probably wouldn't listen anyway. 
A little steam escaped from George's stack. Theodore thought he was angry at him, but George turned to the submarine and thundered, You are being rude to my friend Theodore, Mr. Submarine. Hello? Then George let out a great blast with his mighty horn that could be heard from one end of the harbor to the other. But the submarine remained as silent as the sea on a sunny day. Theodore thanked George for trying to help. All his friends had tried to help. But some things were not meant to be. The tugs turned sadly for home. Just then, there was a sound, a kind of groaning, kind of moaning sound. The tugboats slowly turned back to the submarine. It was moving. Then the most surprising thing happened. One sleepy eye blinked open and looked right at the tugboats. The tugs were scared, but fascinated. They slowly floated toward the other end of the great vessel. <sighs> oh, hello there, tugboats, said the submarine, who seemed surprised to have visitors. The tugboats turned to one another in amazement, and it was then that Vodak understood. We've been speaking to the wrong end he exclaimed. The submarine had been sleeping soundly from his long ocean voyage and had finally been awakened by George's powerful horn. Northumberland looked around at the tugs, waiting for someone to say something. All the tugs looked at Theodore. Theodore floated forwards just a little bit. Welcome to our harbor, he said. I hope you like it here because it's... because it's... Theodore could feel the other tugboats watching and waiting to hear what he would say. He swallowed the big lump in his throat and said, because it's nice. Theodore knew it wasn't the way the other tugboats thought was the right way to welcome, but it was his way. <coughs> it's really nice, shouted Hank, as if he had just thought of it. Well, thank you, tugboats, yawned Northumberland. What a wonderful welcome indeed. Theodore glanced at the other tugboats who had all come to help him welcome, and suddenly, he knew he had one more thing to say to the submarine, a very important thing. And also because, said Theodore, most of all, this is the friendliest harbor in the whole world. The tugboats smiled big smiles and tooted their horns, and Theodore, well, Theodore smiled the biggest smile of all. You know, of all the harbors I've visited in my long years as a sailor, I'd have to say that the big harbor here is especially friendly. Well, I finally got the big board finished for the day. I just hope that all the boats and ships are happy about where I put them. But like Theodore says, you do the best you can with a little help from your friends. Theodore Tugboat returns after this, right here on Cubo. Someone very special about...